boys are back and we are up late discussing Hawkeye tonight. Woo! In full spoiler details for episodes one and two. I'm so excited to dive into this because I love the character of Hawkeye in the comics and especially Kate Bishop. I've been so excited to see this brand new show, especially after I saw we're getting some Christmas runs and it seems like it's going to be based off the Matt Fraction run and it is all of that and more. But of course, the most important part about these nights and staying up because we're all Marvel geeks is leaving comments and having a great discussion down below, guys. So make sure to leave a comment down below what your guys' thoughts are on the first two episodes of Hawkeye. Again, we're talking full spoilers, so if you haven't seen the episodes yet, Go check those out, come back here, and again, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on content like this over here on a daily basis and as well as on a weekly basis because I'm always one of those crazy people who's going to stay up with you to give you guys that content so we have a place to talk movies and TV. So it's time to dive into Hawkeye's episode one and two, and overall, I'm in. This show, I'm loving the tone, especially because it is based off one of the highly acclaimed and arguably the best Hawkeye comic book run yet, the Matt Fraction run. If you haven't read it yet, you very much should. And it's also giving us the introduction to Kate Bishop, a character that many of us MCU fans have been dying to see. And Haley Seinfeld, I mean, has been pretty much just fan casted for years into this role. And she's becoming Kate Bishop and she embodies Bishop in every single way. Because the thing that I so far love about the first two episodes is the fact that it is a more central... I thought it was going to be more on Hawkeye and Jeremy Renner's shoulders, but I would argue that we have actually gotten more screen time of, with Kate Bishop over the last two episodes than anything that I would imagine. And it feels like at the end of this episode too, that we are very much going to start going in this team-up direction that the trailer is very much alluded to, which we're going to talk all about that. I'm going to start with episode one right now, then we'll get to episode two. And then we'll kind of theorize at the very end before we drop off for next week. Now, of course, within episode one, you know, we kind of just get reintroduced. We see Kate Bishop as a kid and we get that fantastic opening scene, which it says 2012. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, okay, okay. So we're going to get young Kate Bishop. Then I start thinking to myself, I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Do you know what else happened in 2012? The Avengers in New York City. And as that clicked in, boom, you see the windows, you see the Leviathans, you see the Chitari, all sorts of things like that. And it all started to piece together. I'm like, she's going to see Hawkeye or Hawkeye's going to save her. And that's what happens. We see Hawkeye kicking ass and being awesome and all sorts of things like that. And, you know, for the most part, when it comes down to the MCU, Hawkeye's kind of been the punching bag of many MCU fan jokes. Some people love him. Some people just think he's kind of boring. My parents absolutely hate Hawkeye and so does my sister. I've always liked Jeremy Renner, so I'm just happy that he's in the role. And, you know, this opening sequence I thought was phenomenal and it really much brought us into the role. And then, of course, we see Kate Bishop and her mischievous stuff and how she's a great archer. And I love the intro to this entire show. I love the graphics, but it really is kind of that origin story showing that Bishop was inspired by Hawkeye at that very point to go off and become, in a sense, her own hero. And I really love how you see the fencing and the archery and the, the combat skills and all sorts of that smartness that we know from Bishop in those intro. And it very much gives it in a very visual interpretation of the entire story. And I thought that was probably honestly the best thing that we probably could have gotten in here. And especially it's it's better than just giving exposition and things like that. And again, if you weren't paying attention to the visuals, they do allude to some of those things in just visual interpretation and visual storytelling, which I think is very strong. And they do that throughout a lot of this episode and a lot of just in general, the first two episodes. But of course, throughout this we see her life. We see how she's going Vera from Migas, her mother. She's dating the guy from Better Call Saul, if I might not. Maybe I'm wrong, but I do love that actor so, so much. And he's so charming and delightful in here as well. And especially the relationship they have with Vera from Miga. We catch a little bit up with Hawkeye, which I thought was very interesting. Of course, we see him at Roger's Musical, which was just cheesy and cringy. And even he thought so too. But the thing that really was hitting him was the PTSD element that I was not expecting to see in this yet. Um, and it's always been something that I've always felt like Hawkeye is one of the most actual aspects of him. Of course, now he has the hearing aid. And I like the illusion of that of when um, Kate Bishop asked about that. It just shows flashbacks of certain situations that we've seen Hawkeye go through. And I actually thought that was really clever of how to bring that in. I always thought that maybe um, Black Widow's sister would be the one that actually makes him go deaf. I'm happy it was actually the other way. And this is the reason that why it is. Again, I'm skipping ahead for a little bit. But that's why I love doing these recaps is I don't really recap everything. We just talk about what I like to talk about. But I really love that moment when Black Widow comes on and it, you see the stress and the pain and the PTSD. And the thing that hit me right in that moment is like, oh shit, half the Avengers are dead or gone or just never coming back. Black Widow, dead. 
Iron Man, dead. Captain America, technically dead. And now you just have Bruce Banner, who's injured. You have Thor, who's out with the Guardians. And you have Clint, Hawkeye himself. And for me, that moment was very emotional for me as well. And especially, you can see it in Jeremy Renner's character as Clint and just how he is feeling. You know, he needs that fresh breath of fresh air. And he has very much changed from the first time we ever met him in Thor to, of course, the Avengers, Age of Ultron, Civil War, and, of course, uh, Endgame. I mean, he's just gone down a dark path, and he's trying to get past that PTSD element that has really much affected him ever since we have ever met him. And I think it's just built and built and built, and Hawkeye really much resembles something that I love about the show so much so far, is that it really tackles the Christmas tone in a really jolly and charismatic way that I think mixes so well, but it also tackles the gritty aspect of what the Matt Fraction comic from Hawkeye was all about. And it kind of is the closest realism to gritty, down-on-the-ground luck of what Marvel's Hawkeye kind of can be. And as well as probably the closest to the nitty-gritty of, say, Daredevil and Punisher. Now, again, it's not as dark and brutal as those as of yet. But I really like how it's kind of mixing both aspects. And that's some of my favorite aspects of Marvel is that more nitty-gritty stuff. Daredevil, Punisher, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, um, Iron Fist, uh, Ghost Rider, things like that. That, again, can go into the mythical elements. But I do love that Defenders, Heroes for Hire type stuff. And this Hawkeye series is very much reminiscent of that, especially because of the villains who are these tracksuit gangster guys who are going after Kate Bishop because what she ends up seeing is her, her new stepdad coming into play. In this weird auction thing, we see the Hawkeye sword, we or Hawkeye sword, we see the Ronin sword, which is nice to see how this is now tying back. There are people out there who want to kill Ronin. She puts on the suit, she kicks ass, which again, I'm loving Kate Bishop in this entire show. I think she is splendid and perfect, and Haley Seinfeld is already making a very remarkable character. And out of all the new MCU characters we've met this year, she is easily already top three favorites for me. And that's saying a lot, because we've got introduced to the Eternals, Shang-Chi, Sylvie, Mobius, and even, of course, Yelena, Black Widow's sister. And there's so many more. I'm already missing Red Guardian, Melina. I mean, I can go on and on with all the new characters, but I'm loving what Haley Steinfeld is bringing to the table here. And, you know, the action was great. And then, of course, she's running, and she finds the death, dead body, and that's not great on her part. And, of course, the dog gets interacting with this, and all sorts of things go crazy. But then Hawkeye gets her at the end of the episode, and he goes, Oh, my God, you're a kid. Episode two picks up right from there and it just goes on of him trying to help her. You know, he's not trying to be that mentor yet, but I think he's going to slowly start aching into that role, which is something that I'm really excited to see. And episode two, you know, while it didn't develop too much more into the story, it still continued what was going on. I never thought in my life that I would ever see Hawkeye LARPing, but we get that in here. And it's a fun sequence because it's something he doesn't want to do, but he's trying to get back the suit so he can clear up her name because she was not Ronin. And he's also trying to make sure that no one finds out that he was Ronin in that situation. But I also love how it's bringing in Linda Cardellini, who is so splendid in this role as well. And I love how she knows his past. She knows what he did during Endgame. And I think that was a really an emotional thing, whereas kids don't. And I think that's one thing where she's understanding, like, hey, I understand what you got to do. Just get back here safe. And it starts to make me wonder, is this the final outing for Hawkeye? Does Clint Barton die in the series? I personally hope not. I think it would be a little bit cliche, but also at the same time, I'm expecting him to get out. So does it kind of add to those avenues where maybe he should perish? Is this the end of his story? It's kind of the handing of the mantle. A lot of phase four feels like it's going to be that handing of the mantle and the ending for a lot of our different heroes. We're getting She-Hulk. We're getting Yelena. We're getting now Kate Bishop. We're getting say who knows who else out there. But I like this passing of the torch kind of segment. And I think Hawkeye has actually been one of the strongest things so far that Marvel has done actually this year. And again, after only two episodes, hopefully there's no filler or anything like that. But if it continues in this trajectory, I'm going to love it. Because the LARPing section was fun, but it added to the entire tone. We learn a lot more about Kate Bishop and this stepdad and how they do that fencing thing and how she calls him out. And now there's clues to that. And then, of course, the red tracksuit guys catch Clint. And he's just like, hey, I just want to talk to your manager. Who at the very end of the episode, it's freaking Echo, who has already confirmed to get her new show, which I'm really excited to see because there's been lots of rumors and theories and all things like that that, that could potentially tie into Daredevil. And I have my theory right now. 
I know there's been a lot of rumors that maybe Wilson Fisk himself, Kingpin, Vincent D'Onofrio might be coming back for this show. And I believe in it. The other thing I got to believe in it is we still don't know who bought Tony's Tower. I know a lot of people say maybe it's Osborne. And I've always wanted to be Osborne, but I don't think it is. Maybe it's the Baxter building. Maybe it's the Fantastic Four. I don't think it is. It's Kingpin. Calling it right now, it's Wilson Fisk Kingpin. I think Vincent D'Onofrio will be in that tower. I think we will see that tower. They made it very much an angle when Kate Bishop as a young girl was looking up. And I, I just sat there and it clicked and I was like, Kingpin! That's going to be King, That's gonna be Wilson Fisk's main tower. And it would make sense because in the Matt Fraction run, if you remember, they do actually go to a party that Wilson Fisk is at. And I think that's going to add to it. I think it'll be at that tower. I'm running with tons of theories, but I want to hear your guys' thoughts on that because that's going to be a very fun aspect of this. But in general, episode one and two very much impressed me. I overall really dug both these episodes. I thought they were charming. I thought they were gritty. I like the action so far. I do want a little bit more of one action take shots. I, I, I Sometimes it gets a little bit too muddled within the editing, but that's a a very small complaint because we've only really barely scratched the surface and a lot of what we've gotten is just an introduction to Kate Bishop and as well as a reintroduction to who and where our character of Hawkeye is right now and I love the PTSD element I love how he doesn't really want to train this girl and I love how Kate Bishop is a giant fan of him plus the dog who doesn't love a good boy I love what is going on so far and Hawkeye has very much impressed me it's not the fastest start that I was expecting but it's one that very much has me intrigued with the mystery going on and I cannot wait to see where this show progresses to so guys make sure to leave a comment again on your guys's theory as well as making sure to hit that like and subscribe button and also guys just in general make sure to head on over to Samsung Films if you guys are interested in seeing movies early I love talking Marvel I love just talking movies and TV and if you're here you're in the right place so once again guys I probably miss out on a couple things but that's again what the comment section is for so of course until next time stay classy